Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to my channel. My name is Paul, the Canadian Snowman, here with the Philippines on Geography Now. I actually know kind of know where they are, uh, but pretty much the only reason I really know where they are is because I've done other countries in that area. So, yeah, definitely check those countries out. Uh, but, yeah, uh, I, kind of, I think I kind of knew where it was anyway before I did those, but... Now I'm like a hundred percent sure instead of just like you know sixty percent, but yeah, the Philippines. Uh, I work with someone from the Philippines, a uh, very sweet lady. So uh, let's uh, let's check this out and see what the Philippines has to offer. All right, before I do, please hit that like and subscribe button below. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you very much, and let's jump to it. Do do three two one. Bam. If you don't know anything about Asia, the Philippines is like the jolliest of them all. They're just happy, fun, jolly people. Hey, and you know what? It's been three years. I'm not taking this anymore. I've been pushed around. I've been threatened. I've been thrown in the dungeon. I've been the butt of all the jokes. I'm the Filipino one. This is my time. My time! Ah! <laughs> what the? What the? <laughs> Welcome. What happened to like the Filipinos being nice and sweet, man? Dude, just kidding. <laughs> Welcome to the Philippines. <laughs> My turn. Okay. It's time to learn geography. No! Hey everyone, I'm Ken, and as you know, I'm half Filipino. Years ago, I was looking for a job and I saw this ad asking for a motion graphics animator on Craigslist. Paul and I literally met up at a Jollibee for my interview. He said I was his top three candidates. In reality, there were only three candidates that applied, so technically I didn't lie, but yeah, the other two people kind of sucked, so yeah. Oh, and back then, I had this weird mustache and Paul's hair was basically this thing. Ken and I have been talking for a long time and we agreed Ken definitely has to be in this episode. You've come so far from that Craigslist Jollibee interview, you've earned this. Thanks. Andana Maximula. Nice. The Philippines is an interesting country because there's sort of a dichotomy between labels. If you ask a Filipino if they consider themselves Asian or Pacific Islanders, you might get contrasting answers. What do you consider hmm. yourself, Ken? Eh, I always thought Pacific Islanders sounded kind of cool, so I usually stuck with that. Ah. So, all right, I'm gonna ask you guys the same question. Uh, if you're from the Philippines, are you, you know, let me know in the comments yourself ken yeah i always thought pacific islanders sounded kind of cool so i usually stuck with that ah. so first of all the philippines is a tropical archipelago of over 7,000 islands about 2,000 of which are inhabited and it is the largest island nation without any land borders or shared island territory with nice. another nation the country is located in southeast asia straddling the philippine sea in the north the south china sea in the west and the sulu and celibus sea in the south just to skip away lies the island of borneo which is split amongst three nations at the closest point only about 22 miles or 40 kilometers away from the nearest island that belongs to the Philippines. Now, in general, many people will refer to one of the three main island cluster regions that people are a part of. There are Luzon in the north, where you can find the capital Manila and where the half of the population lives, Visaya in the center, and Mindanao in the south. Otherwise, the nation is made up of 17 regions, one of which is autonomous, the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region of Muslim Mindanao. This place has a high level of self-rule and autonomy appointed by the government. We'll explain more about this later. If you want to be okay. absolutely technical, Quezon City, a bit north of Manila, is the largest city in the Philippines. However, the surrounding 16 towns and cities by Manila are called Manila Metro, or the National Capital Region, and they basically act as one unit. Otherwise, the largest city outside of the NCR are Davao City in Mindanao and Cebu in the Visayas. Manila has the largest and busiest airport, Ninoy Aquino International Airport, which is basically the hub that services the entire NCR. They also have the busiest shipping port at the Port of Manila. Otherwise, the second largest airport is Cebu Mactan International, and rounding up for third place is Davao City Francisco Bangoy International. In terms of land transport, wow. though, the Philippines is well connected amongst the islands. In fact, the longest highway is the Pan-Philippine Highway that stretches about 3,500 kilometers across the country and connects Luzon, Samar, Liet, and Mindanao with underground tunnels connecting them. Finally, the nice. Philippines has only two territorial disputes. That's, that's awesome, because I, I was just actually just about to pause and go, like, is there a road between all these islands, or you have to take like, a bunch of ferries and, you know, and that's really awesome that, you know, that they have the infrastructure to have, you know, those bridges through all those islands. That's really cool. Good job. 
Buttes, the state of Sabah in Malaysia on North Borneo. The territory once had been part of the Sultanate of Sulu, a Muslim state that existed the 15th century to the 20th century, and that's a whole other story. As for the right. other dispute, as we mentioned quite a few times already, this whole area known as the Spratly Islands is a complete mess. If you don't know anything about this place, it basically goes like this. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty crazy. This is the map showing what everyone claims in the area. This big one right here wow. is China's. Like, yeah, they just kind of pretty much went for all of it. This has even led to a few skirmishes between nations that have built patrol stations on the island. And when they spot a ship that gets too close, things can get kind of ugly. It's kind of like uh, this. Hey, 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 what are you doing? This is my area. I'm just doing some fishing and research here, you know? Why do you have a shovel then? Are you b building something? Or? Well, technically there's no land protruding from this reef, so uh, there's no land claim. So you're just gonna build your own land? For research. Anyway, anyway here are some notable spots of interest. Fort Santiago. Yeah, I think I, I think I might have said that some, something about that in the the China episode I did. Yeah, China is just kind of you know making their own islands out there, which means then they're gonna try and claim, I guess, the land you know around those islands. I don't know, something like that, right? Anyways, hold on to your islands. Build your own land for research. Anyway, anyway, here are some notable spots of interest. Fort Santiago. Magellan's Cross. San Agustin Church. Sagada Hanging Coffins. Aguilado what? Shrine. Cebu's Philippine Taoist Temple. Shrine of Mama Mary in Tagaytay. The Lapu Lapu Shrine. Luneta Park. MacArthur Landing Site. Bunawi Rice Terraces. The Malacanang wow. Palace. Vigan has many historical and colonial buildings. The various national museums of history and arts. Tons of wow. amusement parks. And that's not even including all the natural wonders of the Philippines. They have an underground river. The most amazing beautiful beaches in the universe hills that look like lumps of chocolate and there's an island in a lake in an island in a lake in an island huh we should hang out sometime yeah when you have 7,000 tropical islands on a volcanic archipelago chances are things can get pretty crazy landscape wise which brings us to man I'm already very impressed like, I didn't realize how much there was there so man, you guys are kicking butt over there What's with the hanging coffins, though, man? That seems that seems like there'd be an awesome story behind that. Anyways, awesome stuff, Philippines. The actual physical land of the Philippines is the biggest treasure you will find here for sure. Anyway, the Philippines lies on the Ring of Fire and is specifically on a tectonic plate named after them, the Philippine Plate. And about 95% of the land is made up of the 11 largest islands. The country was essentially formed through the tectonic activity between the Philippines, Manila, and the Mindanao Trenches, the Mindanao being the second deepest in the world. This makes the country susceptible to small earthquakes and minor volcanic activity. About 53 active volcanoes can be found in all of these largest islands, except for Palawan. The most most famous and picturesque of these include these three. See this island here, Kamiguin? It actually has more volcanoes than towns on it. Seven versus five, making it the place with the most number of volcanoes per square kilometer in the world. In fact, the tallest peak in the Philippines is a potentially active. Oh, never mind. They're probably about to say, I was going to say, like, on that island, it's like, are they all active? You know, obviously they're all not active, but that'd be kind of crazy to be one of those towns with a whole bunch of volcanoes around you. I, I sure hope they're not very active. That'd be pretty scary stuff. Square kilometer in the world. In, in fact, fact, the tallest peak in the Philippines is a potentially active volcano, Mount Apo, located in the South Mindanao area. The country has numerous mountain ranges and highlands that dip into the fertile valleys, the largest range being the Cordillera Range in the North Luzon area, hooking into the Sierra Madre Range on the east side, which feeds the longest river of the country, the Cagayan, that flows into the Cagayan Valley. This valley, along with the Central Luzon Valley, are the largest arable croplands and produce nearly all of the rice in the Philippines. The Bisayas are known for growing the most sugarcane, whereas Mindanao specializes heavy in coconut and fruit production. Back in Luzon, though, you can find the largest lake in the country, Lake Laguna da Bay, which is actually in the caldera of a dormant volcano. The lake has a weird detached island called Talim and is actually drained by the Pasig River that flows through the capital, Manila. And finally, the country is the heart of typhoon territory. They can come at almost any time of the year. The nation will experience, on average, about 20 of the turbulent storms annually, which often flood to their many river systems. Wow. But yeah, if anything, Filipino are the most cyclone adapted people on earth. Wow. They're used to it. The water has always been kind of their thing. Swimming, sailing, fishing. Just 
not exactly quite diving into it. Otherwise, the Philippines is one of the 17 mega diverse nations on Earth. They actually have the largest level of marine biodiversity in the world within their waters and the highest rate of animal discovery on the planet with 16 new mammal species that were discovered in the past decade alone. They have everything from the longest snake in the world, the reticulated python, the largest fish in the world, whale sharks, seven of the eight known species of giant clam are found in the Philippines, cool. the world's smallest hoofed animal, the Philippine mouse deer, and their national bird is the largest eagle in the world. Economically speaking, the Philippines is considered a newly industrialized nation. It is transitioning out of becoming an agricultural based system to a service and manufacturing based one. They have like three of the top 10 largest malls on earth. Ooh, just you wait, I'm taking the top spot soon. They're one of the fastest growing economies in Asia, and as the 34th largest economy in the world, their GDP purchasing power parity has surpassed the $2 trillion mark. Basically, the Philippines is definitely becoming a key power player in the world stage. It's like, <laughs> we're, we're so rich. <laughs> Wealth and prosperity. Someday. For what is. I'm definitely impressed because I, I, I'm guilty of this. I didn't think the Philippines, I didn't realize the Philippines was like so advanced and, you know, had, you know, was that far ahead you know so i apologize for you know not really thinking that myself i mean you guys are ex extremely advanced it seems like and you guys are like pushing forward so props to you guys man we're so <laughs> rich <laughs> wealth and prosperity someday for what it's worth though yeah. mining fishing and agriculture are strong industries as well they are currently the world's largest nickel and abaca or manila hemp producers and the second largest coconut producer after indonesia oh. tourism though is another important industry taking up about eight percent of their gdp employing over three million people and now Food! Now, in the Philippines, every region has their own specialty and culinary strains. Yeah, every dish looks like a fairy exploded. Lots of dishes you can eat kumakai and kamai, or eat with your hands. Yeah, pretty much everything has rice, and then you're gonna get a lot of grease and salt and vinegar, and a lot of, like, I don't care if that looks like it goes there or not, I'm still gonna eat it anyway. Right, Ken? Yeah, that's it's, Filipino food. Yeah. There's really no official national dish, but three meals that are well known for are adobo, lumpia, and sinigang. Mm. And in the non-Muslim parts, lechon is a huge deal. There are also dishes like... Tagalog steak, tinola, pancit luglug, kare kare, sigstig, tapsilog, balut, kinilaw, and my favorite Filipino dish, palabok. Just put some nice little lemon juice on it. I actually got this at Jollibee. If you don't know what Jollibee is, it's like the most popular fast food chain in the Philippines. It's like if McDonald's and KFC adopted a Filipino baby and they even added spaghetti to their <laughs> menu for some reason. Otherwise, Filipinos are dessert experts. They love their ube, ube everything, ube ice cream, ube bread, ube pie, ube, ube cakes. Oh, they also have like sapin, sapin, and cassava cakes. Those are the best desserts in my opinion. Opinion. They also have halo halo, leche flan, turon, buko pandan, and puto. What you call me? If you're either Latin American or Spanish, you may notice some of those foods are also found in Latin cuisines, and there's a reason for that. <laughs> yeah, let's we'll explain that in. Oh now only in the Philippines can you find people that have Spanish names, speak English, celebrate an Austronesian culture, and cook Chinese. General MacArthur once said, give me a thousand Filipino soldiers and I will conquer the world. Yeah, for some reason, Filipinos are like the best friends of Asia. Filipinos still have the best attitudes and smiles. They even give time off felony sentences if the prisoners volunteer to take part in a Michael Jackson dance performance to the public. Ah, uh, but we're getting ahead of ourselves. First, the graph. The country has about 110 million people and is the eighth most populated country in Asia. And the 12th most populated country in the world. There are about 175 ethno-linguistic people groups in the Philippines, the majority of whose languages are Austronesian. Of these groups, the largest ones are the Tagalog at about 28%, 13% are Cebuano, 9% are Ilocano, and 8% are Bisaya. The rest are made up of other groups plus a small minority of non-native citizens, mostly Asians and Americans. It's important to note though that the Philippines has about 10.2 million people overseas worldwide. It is one of the largest diaspora populations spanning over 100 countries. The U.S. alone has about 4 million. I mean, they were at one point colonized by the U.S., so go figure. They use the Filipino peso as their currency, they use the types A, B, and C plug outlets, and they drive on the right side of the road. Oh, and keep in mind, the word Pinoy is synonymous with something that is Filipino. You might see that used a lot. Now back to the ethnic groups thing. Since there are over 175 of them, you would think, how do they all communicate? Well, the Philippines has two official languages. English, which makes them the fifth most English-speaking nation on Earth, and Filipino, wow. which is the standardized version of Tagalog. The Philippine Tagalog language spoken today is a very very different from pure Tagalog. It actually has about 14% Spanish, 10% Malay, and 7% English mixed into it with a slew of other borrowed loanwords. You can see the influence in words like pintelador, guapo, zapatos, 
And familia. Often, Filipinos will substitute an F with a P. Or a V with a B. Or a V with a B. Yeah, yeah. same with Koreans, actually. Yeah. <laughs> High five with minimal consonants! Yay! <laughs> oh, and fun fact, Ken taught me this. Uh, in Tagalog, you can actually say an entire conversation just using the syllable ba. For example... Ba? Ba-ba. Ba-ba. Ba-ba-ba. Ba-ba-ba-ba. Ba-ba. 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 Ba ba ba. Well, that was fun. Otherwise, in the Visayas and Mindanao area, Cebuano is a common language, as well as the other regional tongues like Waray and Dabuano. They even have the only Spanish-based Creole in Asia, Chavacano, located in Zaboanga City. Now, the Philippines is unique in that over a past few centuries, they've gone through three periods that shaped their identity. Before European intervention, the Philippines has had a multitude of early civilizations that built kingdoms and dynasties like the Tondo, the Namayan, the Pangasinan, and the Sulu Sultanate. Many of these kingdoms had their own indigenous writing system, such as the Babayan, Buhid, Eskayan, and Kulitan. Genetically, Filipinos are classified as belonging to the broader Austronesian people group, with their closest cousins being the Micronesians, like the Mariana Islanders, Guam, and Palau. Although over the years, many people have mixed, and today it is speculated that somewhere around one-fifth or more of the population may have some kind of Chinese ancestry. ancestry. After the Spanish came in, they adopted many of the customs, traditions, and cultural traits which have Spanish roots. Their own country is named after Spanish King Philip. The biggest trait, though, would be the fact that they are predominantly Catholic, at about 81% of the population adhering to the faith. The rest are mostly Protestant, with a small Muslim minority in the South Mindanao area. The Philippines is the largest Christian nation in Asia, fifth largest Christian nation on Earth, and third largest Catholic nation after Brazil and Mexico. They have so many holidays and festivals devoted to Catholic themes, like All Saints Day, Holy Week, and Easter, wow. and of course, the largest one, Christmas. The Philippines has the longest Christmas season out of anywhere else on Earth. Okay, so now we're just gonna rapid fire a list of 12 fun cultural facts for the Philippines. Filipinos have a ton of superstitions. For example, whistling at night will turn you into a werewolf. For formal occasions, you may see Filipinos wearing traditional barongs for men and Maria Clara or Mestiza nice. dresses for women. There are many other traditional costumes and customs for the other 170 ethnic groups. Too many to cover, but it goes everywhere from feathers, coconut fibers, hair dresses, tribal tattoos, and so on. Speaking of which, the Philippines dominates major international beauty pageants with a grand total of 15 victories at the Miss Universe, Miss wow. World, Miss International, and Miss Earth competitions. Basketball and boxing are the most popular sports by far. They have the oldest basketball league in Asia and the second oldest in the world after the United States. And come on, we all know Pacquiao. The Philippines is the leading nation to yeah. train and export nurses abroad. It's been said at one point, every Filipino has their should I just drop everything and become a nurse moment in their life crisis. That's a fact. <laughs> <laughs> I've had those. And the word balikbayan means returner or returning family. It is used when someone comes back from expat work abroad. You might hear the honorific title of po or opal for elders. And a lot of people often raise the backs of the hands of their elders to their forehead as a sign of respect and say bless. In the Philippines, you have your name and you have your Pinoy nickname and they get really weird and creative. Pepsi, Bing Bong, Jelly Boy, Pinky, Bum Bum, and Earl. Every Filipino on every <laughs> island in every region can tell you Filipinos are obsessed with karaoke. I want a nickname. Someone, somebody give me a nickname below. Filipino on every island in every region can tell you Filipinos are obsessed with karaoke. The first karaoke machine was actually patented by a Filipino, Roberto del Rosario, even though some Japanese dude invented it, but he patented it. Obviously, that means music is a big deal in the Philippines. Besides taking modern cues from American pop, they also have traditional styles. Instruments include things like Gudyapi, Kilitang, Gimbal, Kubing, and Togali. In addition, there are many different styles of dance, but the most famous one considered the national dance is Tinikling, a dance done between two pairs of perpendicular bamboo poles that are clapped together as percussion tools and the dancers must weave their feet in and out in the spaces before getting hit or tripped now on a bit of and we get their like uh toes like stomped on like uh, those sticks man no uh, don't get me wrong i would definitely play that thing i'd probably trip and fall and hurt myself but i would definitely try you gotta try everything right and the dancers must weave their feet in and out in the spaces before getting hit or tripped. Now, on a bit of a more objective note, we do have to talk about some of the controversies. The Philippines uh -oh. is beautiful, but if you've been keeping up with current events, they do have their fair share of issues that have made headlines. We don't sugarcoat everything here. Human trafficking, whether in the sex industry, slavery, or organ smuggling, has been a problem in certain areas. And even though anti-trafficking acts have been passed by the government, enforcement has not always been on par. The drug trade has also been a major inconvenience for decades, affecting millions of people in the country. This has led to the new 
new controversial laws instituted by President Duarte, which encouraged the public to seek bounty in exchange for hunting down drug pushers. Many have died in the process. And finally, you have the Moro conflict, an insurgency in the predominantly Muslim Mindanao region, which sought to take parts of Eastern Malaysia and break away through conflict. The fight has been going on hmm. for nearly half a century, and now it's just ending at the turn of the 21st century. Yeah, kind, kind of. of. For what it's worth, though, in the Philippines, everyone is family at the end. You don't have to be related to anyone to call someone ate or kuya. There's even a word, bayanihan, which means something like helping one another through community spirit without expecting anything in return. In any case, we gotta finish off this segment with history. Austronesians. Tribal kingdoms and sultanates. This guy came to- uh, I just wanna ask too, uh, so if I was coming to visit, like where would you guys recommend, like if you're gonna visit, like the capital, would that kind of be the, the best place to go, like to get a hotel or something? Or talking about maybe like the beach area, kind of like a place where you can kind of, I don't know, look at you know, more of the sites or whatnot, or I don't know. These guys seem like really fun people. To the islands. Catholicism comes in. Lapu Lapu and Magellan dies in battle. Five Spanish dudes followed through. They finally become a colony of Spain. The Galleon trade. British Philippines. And then back to Spain. The Treaty of Paris. Philippine Revolution. The Spanish-American War. First Philippine Republic. Philippine-American War. American occupation. Wow. World War II, Japan invades. American pushes them back. Finally, Philippine independence. Ferdinand Marcos turned from president to dictator. Martial law. This guy gets killed because he was against the regime. People power revolution in 1986. Growth from agricultural society to an industrial one and here we are today and now man you guys got a lot of history that's a lot of war that's a lot of different countries kind of coming in dang so you guys got a little bit of everything good job i'm glad you guys i'm glad you guys speak english so when i go there at least i, I can you know that's one of the big things where when i do go visit someplace i want to be able it, it makes it a lot easier to make a decision when you know i speak the language so and Definitely glad you're up on the list, up top of the list. In 1986, martial law. This guy gets killed because he was against the regime. People power revolution in 1986. Growth from agricultural society to an industrial one. And here we are today. And now we finish off with the notable famous people condensed. Some famous people you guys, the Pinoy geography suggested we mentioned in this episode include yeah. Lapu Lapu, <laughs> Jose Rizal, these two saints, Melcora Aquino, Manuel L. Quezon, Lacan Dula, Josefa Yanes Escoda, and Vicente Lim, Carlos Peña Romulo, and all the Miss Universe winners. And there's a ton of Americans with Filipino or partial Filipino descent. Yeah, you can see there's lots of American Filipinos. Those two get along pretty tight. We'll explain more on how that happened in... Okay. Because of the long history in the Philippines being colonized by two major Western powerhouses, it would make sense that it would have ties with the outside world in many different ways. For friends, the Philippines is generally close with all the ASEAN nations and does great business with them, particularly Indonesia and Malaysia, their closest neighbors. The Marshall Islands, Palau, and the federal states of Micronesia are all cousin countries, many of which have Filipino migrants in them. And they all share the same history of being former U.S. territories and U.S. influenced states. Of course, Spain will always be in the back of their minds as the former colonizers that they gained much influence from. Although Filipinos are not considered Latino, the Spanish and many Latin Americans kind of see them as like the adopted Asians that totally fit in their family. It's like, come on, you're Catholic, you eat flan, every fifth word you speak is Spanish, you're basically one of us. Interestingly enough, the relationship with Mexico has historically been always strong. The Philippines was ruled under a Mexico-based vice royalty of New Spain. The Manila Galleons were Spanish trading ships, which for two and a half centuries linked the Philippines with Mexico across the Pacific Ocean, making one or two round trip voyages per year between the ports of Acapulco and Manila. And Mexican traditions were brought in like the Day of the Dead and Champorado. When it comes to their best friends, however, most Filipinos would probably say, even though colonial years were a little bit bumpy, ultimately the USA and South Korea. South Korea was one of their closest best friends from the 20th century on. World War II really bonded with them after the Japanese occupation years, and they supported each other diplomatically. Koreans are the top number one tourist demographic that visit the Philippines. Koreans kind of admire the fact that even though they were both influenced by the US, Filipinos speak better English, whereas Filipinos practically obsess over Korean products and media. Ah, oh, us. That's Korean why we're... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For the USA, ties were close ever since they became their colony in 1898. The US also had the largest number of overseas Filipinos at over 4 million, most of whom live on the West Coast states like Hawaii and California. They are one of the oldest Asian partners of the US, they have a mutual defense treaty, and they are the largest export partner and second largest import after China. American pop culture dominates much of the youth influence, Hollywood studios love filming there, and Gallup polls have shown that the USA is favored on average by over 90% of the people asked, making it one of the most pro-American countries on the planet. And Ken, you take the conclusion. 
In conclusion, if you enter a room full of Asians, you definitely know who the Filipinos are. While everyone's so uptight, we're the ones singing karaoke and somersaulting. You could just feel the energy of a Filipino. There's a touch of Latin flavor with American pop undertones. But in the end, no matter what island, you're immediately considered part of the Pinoy family. Ken, Sweet. one of my best friends. I love you, man. I'm so proud of you. Thanks. Stay tuned. Poland is coming up next. Awesome. The Philippines are apparently extremely awesome. So I can basically go to like a bar up there. Everyone's just really cool and chill and you can kind of like conversate and talk to everyone. They kind of just wel welcome you like family and friends. That'd be really cool. So it definitely seems like a very welcoming country, So that, which is very awesome. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please hit that like and subscribe button below. Uh, I really appreciate it. And wow, definitely another eye opener, you know, just how advanced and welcoming you guys are. And, you know, you just have a lot going for you as far as, you know, seeing stuff and all that good, good stuff. Uh, but anyways, guys, yep, I'm out of here. Hope you guys continue with me doing every country in the world alphabetical order. Also, got a lot of, a lot of other war and history type uh, playlists I got. So, anyways, I definitely check that stuff out. But anyways, I'm out of here. Like, subscribe. Peace. You guys have a great day. Appreciate it.